In this video I'm going to take a look at how you can add menu items to what is effectively a menu bar within a TK Inter window. This line imports TK Inter so I can use the facilities offered by the TK Inter module. It's been imported in such a way that I will always have to use this TK here as a prefix as you can see on this program statement and on this program statement here. This line will create an instance of a TK inter window. We can see here we're prefixing with the TK and the full stop. This is referring to the class defined in TK inter and of course this will allow us to create an instance that is then bound to this name. So we can can take from this line the fact that we have a window and this is the name bound to that window. This line creates an instance of the menu class where this is the menu class here and you can see we're passing in my window which was created on this line and this ensures that the menu created is contained within the window that was created on this line. In other words this window is the container for the menu that this is creating and you can see the need to put the TK and full stop in front of this bit of the code and of course we can see that that has been assigned to this and this means that my underscore menu is the name bound to the instance of the menu class that was created by this bit of the code. Now this line is a message to this menu that was created on this line and this message will invoke this method the add underscore command method that takes as its argument quit as a string that's assigned to label. Now this will mean that the menu we'll be looking at will have an entry that is quit. This line is also a message to this menu and we're invoking this method and on this occasion we're sending in colour to the label. So we're going to have another menu item that has this string and this line will configure the window that was created on this this line with this menu because this is the menu that was created here that we then added two items to and the fact that I'm assigning this menu to this which is a named parameter for this method means I will now have my menu placed upon this window and of course this sets up the main event loop. The runtime for this computer program is shown here and you can see that this line is responsible for producing the window. This will produce the menu and the menu I'm showing here and this is really the menu bar. So I could have called this my menu bar. That might have been a better name for the code. But it's clear that what I'm trying to achieve is the area here being the menu bar. And these we can see are the items that are placed on that menu bar. And if you look here where I'm adding label quit, this line has been responsible for putting this on the menu bar. And this line has been responsible for putting this on the menu bar. So we can see that this is quit, which appears here. This is color, which appears here. Of course, when we execute these four statements, we don't get the window displayed like this. We have to wait to this line before we can see the menu because what this is doing, it's placing the menu that was created onto the window. So it's this line that's responsible for placing the menu bar and these two items onto the window. Let's consider this computer program and it's almost identical to the one above. The difference is if you look at these two lines of code and compare them to these, you can see I've swapped them around. Here, for example, you you can see label has been assigned quit whereas here in the same position I've set label is assigned color so if we look at the runtime for this computer program we can see it here and look to these two items and you can see we have color first followed by quit and compare these two to how they appeared in the runtime up here and you can see these have been reordered now they've been reordered because I've reordered these two program statements here the color comes first so that gets placed here and the quick comes second so that gets placed here. 
Of course, I've arranged for these two items to be in these positions using these two lines here and making sure I have them in the correct order. But if you look at this one, for example, you can see this is a message to the menu that's invoking the add command method to which I'm passing color to the label. Now, the trouble with the graphical user interface I have now, I can click to my heart's content on color and quit, but nothing's going to happen. And that's because I've not attached any code to these two items now that's what the next program is going to do it's going to alter this program by altering these two lines and also adding in this region two functions where each function will have a responsibility for one of the clicks on this so what I'm going to do I'm going to have clicking on this quitting the application and we saw that in the last video how to do that and just so we can see what happens I'm going to have have clicking on this change the background color of this window to red this computer program shows the changes I've just discussed and you can see here that I have two functions defined now I'll come back to those in a moment but what I would like to do is to point out their names this is quit underscore app and this one is change underscore color so when I come to this line and this is the one that I've added this bit to command equals change color we are saying that when this appears in the menu and I click on it this will ensure that the code to execute is the function with this name which is this one here whereas if I go on to this line we can see this is the one where I set it to quit what this is doing it's saying the command equals quit underscore app and that is this one here which we can see from the code inside will destroy the window so the window will disappear when I click onto the quit if I look at this function what we can see within here I'm referring to this window which is the window that was created on this line and I'm referring to this which is its background color and I'm assigning that the string red now that will alter the windows background color to red and if you're unsure as to why this bit of the code works I've covered this earlier in the playlist on TK but the key here is these two lines you see this method puts color on the menu bar and this says if the user clicks on that color when it appears on the menu bar then execute this function here so we can see for this computer program that the runtime is here and the color and the quit have appeared on the menu bar due to these two lines of code. Now follow the cursor. If I come to here now and click on color, you can see that the background color of the window does indeed change to red. If I now come here to where it says quit and I click on the quit, you can see that the window indeed does disappear. Check out the supporting website for these videos. In addition, why not follow me on Twitter as I issue a tweet every time I upload a new video.